What? Perfect Don't time to put orange in your mouth. Why not? Get that vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts Live, episode 104. We got a lot to talk about. I don't know what anything is that we're going to talk about it because I can't see the notes this week. So you guys are going to have to tell me. But first, let's start off with what you've been playing. Not too nerdy. You want to start us off this week? Uh, sure. Um, I have been playing. Let's try to look for video games at uh, flea markets and uh, garage sales. That's pretty much what I've been playing the whole week. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't get a chance to play too many games this week, unfortunately. Um, I did get a chance to play The Walking Dead uh, Michonne uh, story or whatever. I haven't played that. I had it for a while. I just never got a chance to play it, and I finally played it through and beat it. I'm actually going to post it on my channel this week. Um, besides that, it was all about garage sales and flea markets. So I have, like, is, that the, is that Telltale? Yeah, that's okay. a, that's there, but it's a it's Michonne's story. Yeah, and like it's all you know that is is pretty good. I thought it was nicely done. I mean, it, not too many things surprised me anymore because we've seen this already before. But I still enjoyed it, nevertheless. You know, it's not as great as the first time doing it because, you know, it, it's just the way it is. But once again, I did all the bad choices. So if you guys like that, I do everything that's probably the worst thing to do. I just throw it out there and just make the worst choice possible, and that's the way it works. That's <laughs> how life works, Sector. <laughs> I mean, you know. it does choices. for some people. You just well, spend a lot more time in jail if you do that. In life, I try to make the right choices, obviously. So this, you know, it gives me opportunity to make all the wrong choices because I would never do that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Uh, will you tease any of your garage sale pickups? Oh, actually, I have one that's just flea markets that did, uh, pickups that I actually posted today. Um, but as for garage, so I did find a very, very rare game. Um, it's pretty, pretty epic. There's one of the most epic finds I had, and I got, I found it at this garage sale. Some lady is like, I don't know, I think they're eighty something years old, and she said that her husband, her ex husband, had the like, games, and she's like, that son of a bitch left me and left all these <laughs> games. Bad. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. So then I looked at him. I cannot believe the game that I found. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you like uh, retro games, definitely check it out on my Not Too Nerdy Retro channel. So, all right. Who wants to go next? I'll go, but I can't right. wait to see that. You always really piss me off with your with your pickups. <laughs> one guy who I know out there that always has something that makes me want to bite through my controller, you know, <laughs> out of frustration and anger. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Uh, I've I've had a pretty epic week in gaming too. Uh, I spent probably seven or eight hours this week playing a division. Uh, Kate and I have been kind of going in and and enjoying that world and kind of fleshing it out and enjoying the expansiveness of, of New York. Uh, the game is it's fun. It's fun. I'll say that uh, it gets repetitive after a while, but it is a, a very fun game. I'm really enjoying now getting some of those stronger weapons. Um, I beat a game called Magicka Two. I talked to you guys. Before you too. move on to, from the division, I want to ask you a couple questions. What, sure. What level are you, first of all? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. So what do you think about the, like, the basic gameplay loop? Because you are a third-person game player. Like, you enjoy that type of gameplay. So I was kind of wondering yeah. what you would think about this. Because the gameplay loop, to me, was kind of boring. The way you, you spend so much time behind cover. What are you thinking about it so far? It is frustrating. Uh, I, we this is that's the one thing that we talk about probably more than anything else during the gameplay. Every now and then you find a decent weapon that takes your mind off of how long you spend hiding behind walls mm -hmm. and how long it takes to take out enemies that aren't even bosses. Yeah. It's very very frustrating. It's kind of like a hide and seek game more so than anything else. You know when you can snipe somebody in the face four and five and six times and they're still just running around fine. It takes you out of the experience a little bit. Uh, you'd expect a game like this to have a, a higher degree of uh, reward when you're actually right. specifically targeting certain areas of the enemy. Yeah, uh, so that is frustrating for me, you know, especially if you're fighting someone who's hard. They have fucking crack shot accuracy yeah, from they anywhere. Yeah. Like, they no do. Kidding, I mean, man. Yeah, they, they have crack shot accuracy. And, and basically, if you try to play like that, you're not rewarded for it. You know, yeah. I'll pull out a sniper every now and then and I'll, I'll pop, you know, some really good shots into any other game, but, you know, kill them, you know, at least get their, their health or their armor bars down but in this game it doesn't seem to really phase them hopefully it's something they take into account because a lot of people argue about that hey, a lot of beastly. people really yeah uh, i'm sorry uh the, the game that you're talking about right now um do you think because like i a lot of people say it's like gears of war the movement but i think the closest game that is is like probably spec ops the line if you remember playing that game i think that like 
the cover. You always have to take cover like you're saying. And the pinpoint actually used to piss me off in that game that you you pop up and you get shot right. Yeah, <laughs> right so yeah you're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I haven't spent that much uh, time playing the Gears of War games. You guys know, but Spec Ops, I did. And yeah, you're absolutely right. They have crack shot accuracy from anywhere. It's like being in that American Sniper movie as a video game. Because you pop your head out, your head gets blown off from anywhere. But uh, we've been enjoying it. Uh, We've been getting some pretty decent drops lately. And I'm looking forward to getting back into there sometime soon. I've also uh, finished this week a game called Magicka 2. Completed that with with Kate. And that was actually a PSN game, which is kind of a fantasy lore type of experience where you're a magician. And a wizard and you go through these levels and you're able to combine up to eight different elements of magic and create your own mm-hmm. so uh that it's really on the fly you know uh real time you got to come up with you know these button presses right then on the spot if you want to create like a shield of fire you got to combine the shield you got to combine the fire if you want to add something else to it you combine that and then you got to do the right button combination to create a force field or you can shoot people with things or imbue your weapon with certain abilities and uh, we had, I played it first. I told her how much fun it was. She played it and we had to go through it. We couldn't stop playing that. So we really enjoyed that. Now, another game that we got to play this week, and I'm sure a lot of you guys heard about this, was the Platinum demo for Final Fantasy 15. Yes. And uh, yeah, I uh, played that, really enjoyed it. A lot of people don't like it, but I have kind of a unique take on that, which we can kind of delve into a little bit more. But another game that I just started playing last night that I think is my favorite first person shooter right now is the Doom beta. Oh my god. It's fucking Doom. awesome. It's so Doom. awesome. It really is. I haven't played anything like that in a long time. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I like Halo. I'm not the biggest Halo fan. It seems like they've taken a lot of the recipe that's made Halo successful, streamlined it, created engaging and awesome and an open uh, level design uh, with the fastest gunplay and fastest and smoothest engine I've ever played on. My god. Uh, and I'm on PS4 playing it. I've never played a game on the PS4 that moves and controls like this. You guys have seen the the trailers that they showed us for Doom months ago when you're actually running around. And a lot of people were saying, oh, it can't be that good. It can't run and, and look like it does. And I was like, holy shit. When I first started playing, I was talking to Kate when I was playing with her. You could actually move this fast and turn and it all works so flawlessly. It's Not no one, joke, man. They make yeah. software. <laughs> you know, they know that, what they're that, doing. That, not one stutter in the uh, in the animation or in the frame rate. It's so smooth. I've never played one like that on, on any console. So I think that that's going to be the new bar that everybody's going to have to meet. Have you guys but, played um, Quake 3 Arena? Yes. <laughs> I like no, Quake I have, 2 better, but Quake 3 was was good. How, how similar does this I haven't played it yet. How similar does this game feel to Quake 3? I haven't – see, the thing is I didn't play the beta portion of it, but I did get a chance to look at it earlier, the demo. Mm-hmm. But, like, I think it's pretty good. Like, and the thing is, like, it's funny because I had to think about it. Someone asked me yesterday, one of my friends said, uh, which one do you think changed more, Wolfenstein from the original or the Doom? Like, between, you know, Wolfenstein to what Wolfenstein is now to Doom to what Doom is now. And I had to stop to think about it. I'm like – like, which one do you guys think changed more? Like, I think Wolfenstein changed more. I think if you asked me Doom when Doom does... 3 came out, I would have said Doom. But now this looks like a return. Like, this let, looks let like they're bringing this. it right back to old school. Yeah. I got Doom 1 in, uh, on PS1. That was I told you guys months ago. That was my first time mm-hmm. I ever played any kind of first-person shooter, and it really blew my mind. It, it, it's so fast. You guys know how fast Doom is. Yeah. For them to recreate that kind of atmosphere in a game like this... It's the same atmosphere, the same kind of level ups, the same kind of shield. Everything looks really similar. It's just more modern. It does feel like traditional Doom. But now with this multiplayer and, and of course, a single player, oh, my God, I can't wait. We're getting to a point now, seriously, guys, where it's too many fucking good games. And if you have a job and you have something called a family, that sucks because you cannot (laughs) really get into all this stuff the way you want to. Yeah. Doom is going to be amazing just because of the, the multiplayer. I feel the same way about that game that I do about Uncharted 4's multiplayer. I told Kate, I said, this is the first person shooter version of of um uh, of a, a kind of a multiplayer experience that Uncharted 4's is. Uncharted 4 is a third person that's amazing. This is the first person that's amazing to me. They're on the same bar. They're so good. And if you guys haven't played it, you can get the de- the beta code from GameStop up until the 5th. 
Just go in it's, there, tell them what console super, you want. From what I've seen, right? It's super fast action. Oh god, they it have really the, is. They have the weapon and armor drops like littered around, so you, you've got to run routes around the multiplayer yeah. maps like you used to, like in Halo and Quake and like those old school multiplayer games. Like that's what I grew up with. Those are the games I remember, and this just is an exact duplicate with modern day graphics and like it's so good. cool everything. 100%. It, it yeah. looks they, so old. Qu- I haven't played it, but it looks so old like school. It's so Unreal fun. Tournament style as well. Like it yeah, just, Unreal Tournament. Yeah, yeah. They, and there's so many different ways to play, right? They have this ability. Of course, uh, you can pick your own loadouts after you unlock level three and four. But there's something that I've equipped instead of using a grenade, which is a teleporter, and you throw it like a frisbee. And it flies straight, and it'll go as far until it hits something, okay? So when you first start the map, you and your team run out. The other team is coming from the other direction. As soon as you guys see each other, everybody starts firing. I throw this teleporter. It flies past them. They think it's a bullet or a projectile. It hits the wall. Then I teleport to where it is. They don't even see me. I'm behind them all of a sudden, lighting them up. It's like so much fun. Oh, my God. I can't wait for Beastly Thoughts to be over so I can go play some more. (laughs) Yeah, it is so, so good. I agree with you 100%, Beastly. I mean, this is like classic Doom, but for the modern age. Like, everything about it, you have to get health packs to get your health back. You have to look for ammo around the map. It's got like that really fast, smooth gameplay to it. You don't even I've never played anything like You just walk really fast. Yeah, there there is no run button. There is no run button. so good. It is you can't so you can't good. click the R three or anything like that to sprint or run faster. You're just, you're Everybody just runs that at just that fast fucking speed. Yeah, it's it's really this is the new bar that everybody's going to have to have to meet or you know at least they're going to have to shoot for. Which is uh, funny to me far- because they just lowered the bar as far as I'm concerned. They like went back to the old school, like all that old shit school. that's been added to games over the last 10, 15 years. They just stripped it away, got back to the basics. Here's, here's this is how you back. Aren't they the yeah. ones that set the bar originally? Though? Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Like, motherfuckers, the bar is right here. We've had it the whole time. <laughs> they created that bar. I mean, I'm, I'm being totally honest. I'm not blowing smoke, man. Uh, when I play that game, it's I haven't felt like that in a first-person shooter in a very, very long time. It's very fresh because it's just different. Like, even though it's I mean, something I mean, that started first person shooters it just feels different it's so much fun and it's so so well executed ed knows what they're doing they really do they another, created the first person shooter genre it's another amazing. game real quick i want to talk about just briefly that i don't think that uh you got a chance to play briar i don't know if you did uh not too nerdy but the platinum demo for final fantasy 15 that came out during the the place i mean not the playstation the uh, final fantasy 15 event uh, hosted by Greg Miller, they finally released this demo in which you're a dr- in a dream sequence. You're the, this character Noctis, and you're a younger version of yourself, and you're going through the world. A lot of people didn't like that demo. I really enjoyed it. They took lots of elements from the Kingdom Hearts games. It's very, very similar to Kingdom Hearts. You actually get a big sword that looks kind of like a keyblade, but it's a big hammer. The control is very similar. You even attack enemies that look just like the darkness from Kingdom Hearts. They have these crazy expansive stages the second part of that demo you're inside this giant dining room and you're like the size of a toy or an action figure and the sense of scale is marvelous and towards the end of that demo you actually turn into your adult self you get real weapons and you fight a real tangible boss but <clears throat> let me just say square did something they did us all a service here because of course this game has been in development for the last 10 years this shit works it works well it it looks fantastic the game is graphically on par of metal gear solid 5 and the 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 engine is flawless i didn't run into anything any issues and i think that they kind of included this dream sequence rather than give us a traditional demo of the game to let us see kind of what kingdom hearts could be because the enemies that you fight in this demo are pulled straight from kingdom hearts straight from kingdom hearts uh especially being a younger version of yourself it really reminds you of being sora you know, from Kingdom Hearts, especially with these fake weapons, bubbles, and all this stuff coming out of out of the characters. I think they wanted to kind of bridge those worlds. Hey, we're going to show you Kingdom Hearts, and we're going to show you what Final Fantasy 15 is going to be like to kind of give you an idea of what to expect. So I'm really excited about Final Fantasy 15. Super excited about Kingdom Hearts 3, because I think that they honestly wanted to show us what Kingdom Hearts is going to be like in this demo. And uh, I'm even more excited for what could possibly be done with Final Fantasy VII the remake. And Robbie, I know you played it, and you said you had kind of a different take on it. You want to, you know, expound on that? I mean, it wasn't that much. Like I guess, kind of like, 
that's it. Because I didn't understand what the hell was going on, especially the final like boss fight you get to at the end. You're kind of like teleporting and hanging off these poles, and I just didn't really understand what was going on. I wish they explained the combat system a little better, but I mean, I think the game has a lot of potential. I just it didn't really give me enough to really be like, do I like this game or not? I'm not sure how I feel about it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Now that was what I played this week. Would you like to continue, Mr. Rabbit? Robbie, somebody. Robbie, you go ahead. I mean, pretty much, I've been playing that Doom beta. That Doom beta is amazing, and I never expected it to be this good. I really haven't been playing that much else this week, so I'm ready to get into the news if you guys are good. I want to talk what I've been playing about, Robbie. Yeah, oh, you're, you're just going to cut sorry, me Briar. off? On, you're just going to like no, move on to the no. news without giving me a chance to say my piece? Briar, I'm Robbie. sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I'm so sorry. I've been playing that This this is what happens when they turn. They think they're adults, bro. They just want to turn their back on you, man. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I've been playing a lot of Destiny, obviously. I've been playing a lot of Iron Banner. <clears throat> Nothing new there. Uh, I have been really watching the uh, the reveals that Bungie's been doing about uh, the next, the spring update, the April update. Uh, a lot of very concerning things. We got a piece of news that I'll introduce in a second uh, that I find to be very concerning. I also, okay, so I've been watching Doom. Right, I haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, but man, that game, I mean, it really does strike that that old Quake 3 Arena vibe for me. I'm really looking forward to it. And Paragon, have you guys seen Paragon at all? I own I Paragon. No. You own Paragon? That game, man, I, I'm excited for that. It's you know, I got into the MOBA thing a little bit with, uh, now I can't remember the name of the game. Damn, he forgot the name of the damn game on his Mac. On the uh, Mac, come <laughs> on, Phil. Come on, Briar, you can't forget. Come this. on, it was Heroes, Heroes of the, the Storm. Storm. Uh, Heroes of the Storm, is that what it was? Yes. Okay, so I started playing a little bit of that as like kind of a mobile light. But this, to me, it's like with that third person and the shooting aspect, it, it appeals to my like, you know, Twitch reflex a lot more. And you still get that MOBA kind of strategy and gameplay. So I'm really I'm really into that game. I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't actually played it yet, but I've watched a lot of gameplay, and I'm really looking forward to jumping into that. But I do want to talk about Destiny a little bit. Destiny this week announced that they're basically going to have a pay-to-play system or a pay pay-to-win system that's coming to Destiny. It's yeah. hidden. It's hidden in there, but it's there. I mean, it, it feels like... It feels like it's they tried to make it as subtle as they could, but man, it is super worrisome, and it's something that uh, Destiny players have kind of like been cautious about or worried about since the Taken King came out, and they started with the microtransactions. Uh, yeah. Basically, what happened is you can buy these Eververse from the Eververse. You can buy these these packages, um, and these packages can can contain armor. Uh, which, you know, obviously could have great discipline intellect builds or discipline strength builds, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, you, they do come at a very low light level, so you do have to infuse better gear to make them worth it. But the more concerning thing is that they also include reputation boosts. With reputation boosts, you can level up the Vanguard, the Crucible, or the... Uh, I can't remember the third name of the vendor. To basically level those things up faster and get weapons faster. So if you're looking for a perfect roll shotgun, uh, you could have more chances to get it if you purchase these Eververse Sterling packages. And it's really concerning to me. It's like, this is not that the sucks. direction I want to see Destiny taken. And I'm really concerned yeah. about it. So pay to win is always, uh, I always feel that's a bad thing. Like I always think yeah. like that's the beginning of the end for a game yeah. when it's pay to win. Especially they're doing it now towards the end of the game. Because that just leads me to believe that most of it, Destiny if not all too. of it, is going to be like that for Destiny 2. Yeah, like, that's what it seems worrisome. like. They're, it's like more of like they're testing it to perfect it now. So that when Destiny 2 comes along right away, right out the gate, you're going to be able to, to pay for things to get things quicker than everyone else. And you know people are going to do it because they want to get a head start. They want to be out, out there before everyone else. So Yeah, that's definitely pay to win. I think there's no doubt in my mind this is pay to win. And I think... If people aren't a fan of this, you have to vote with your wallet. That's absolutely how you get the message out to these companies and say, we do not like this. You have to but, not buy it. That's what Robbie, we have to do. Robbie, the other side of that is the people who do agree with they're going to vote with their wallet too. So, <laughs> you yes. know, there's going to be a lot. And, and, and see, the thing is, people who are, are down with this kind of pay to, pay to win, if they have a lot of money, they're going to spend a lot of money. 
They're going to yeah. keep going until they have an obvious advantage. And yeah, it sucks for the hardcore. It sucks for the people who want this game to stay, you know, level on a level playing field. This is going to make things really out of whack and fuck up the equilibrium of that game really bad. Unfortunately, it just shows like how hard it is to develop a game because the problem is this, right? Once you develop the game to maintain the game and constantly have new updates and new things that everyone wants, it's going to cost money to do that. And it, this is just another way of showing it to like they have to find ways, creative ways to get people to pay more. Otherwise, they're not, you know, they're not going to be able to fund like the maintenance and stuff. So the people that want the updates and all these new things, you also have to understand that that's going to be development hours. That's going to be time and money. And unfortunately, that's like the only thing. Like you have to compromise. Which, as a gamer, it sucks. But as a developer, I understand also why they're doing it. But I also think I know that that's like the beginning of the end for certain games because you're going to lose a, a big chunk of people that are not going to want to pay for something. Now, let me, they'll move on to the next game. Well as said. someone, as someone in the industry, um, not too nerdy, and who knows about this stuff, what else could they do? You know, uh, they've already tried the DLC. They've done that. And and from all appearances, it's been working. You know, every time one of the Destiny paid DLC comes out, it's like the number one selling thing. Everybody's buying it. It's like a brand new retail release. So it seemed like that could have funded it and kept them going. Is it not enough? Is it that this update is free, that they need to recoup the cost or something? See, the thing is this. Like, the problem is ever since the mobile industry took off for video games and all that, those apps – People notice that the most successful things are pay paid apps or paid like like for example you do those uh, uh, micro transactions stuff like that on paid applications and that just the way it works that's what works you know and that's what how you make money on there because the minute you keep uh, funding all these servers and you keep putting all these man hours on there and all these updates for a whole year I mean look when Destiny came out and look at how long they're still supporting that same game. You know, and Destiny 2 has not come out yet. Even though it's not as much updates as everyone wants to, you're, they're still supporting it. But the servers and everything else and updates and patches, you're still supporting it. And unfortunately, that costs a lot of money. You have to hold on to those developers. And don't forget, they not only have to hold on to those developers, they had other developers working on the new game as that was being held on to. So, like, you still have a, a huge team, you know, and that that's just cost a lot of money. Unfortunately, if you want a new game to release in a reasonable time at the same time as this game being, you know, maintained, it's going to cost money. Yeah. And I and I that's the the thing that sucks about everything, you know. So so are you are you saying that you think or it's possible they've exhausted all other financial resources and this is the last thing they can do to recoup, recoup those costs? Is there nothing else they can add to the game and charge for rather than making it pay to win? Have they There's, tried everything? Is there anything that anybody's talking about that they could add that people would pay for? That wouldn't see, here's the, the thing, game? right? If if they jacked up the price higher than sixty dollars, no one wants it. Everyone's gonna argue, complain that it's up sixty dollars. So then they include a DLC to say, okay, you pay for your first sixty dollars, and then now here's the DLC content for later on. But now people complain, hey, well, this isn't right. We already paid for something. Why do we? You know, you should. This should have been in the main part of the game. That's the next argument people make. So then now they're trying. They even give you free updates, but now. There's certain features that you may want as a gamer. You may want it quicker than someone else. So now they're trying to Robbie, say, well, here, you could, you could, uh, you could <laughs> he's, work. He's got a, another window open with Pornhub. <laughs> they're like, you could, you could work up, you on the game and uh, you earn it for free, or you could just pay ahead of time and get it quicker. So like now they're giving you options because they understand that a lot of people are going to fight it either way. So now they're trying to give you more options as a gamer. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like that because it may affect the gameplay itself where someone else got something that they didn't earn, you know, while you, you know, while you Ground, were taking all this time. Out, to do. Yeah. I, I don't really have a problem with having microtransactions in the game. I just don't like that. They're now allowing us to pay for weapons and armor. Like I, I yeah. really don't like that. Uh, like shaders, any cosmetic items whatsoever, fine. Ships, shaders, you know, whatever. Those, you know, those artifacts, marks, whatever. I don't even care about it. Uh, but as soon as they go to weapons and armor, that directly affects gameplay. That affects crucible gameplay. That affects your power in the raid, you know. Like that is pretty clear. I'd much rather see him be releasing DLC right now that's paid DLC. You know, like a Dark Below or a House of Wolves style DLC. But I think they've proven that they just couldn't maintain that schedule that that we had in year one where they came out with three DLCs in year one. They just couldn't keep that going. Um, so hopefully 
with Destiny 2, they'll be able to they'll be able to develop DLC faster. Their their engine and their their development process will be more streamlined, so they can develop that DLC faster. So we don't have to have pay to win kind of stuff. But Activision, you know, is doing this in Call of Duty too. So it's they're kind of Activision, you know, has always been kind of reticent to do this stuff, but they yeah. kind of jumped in whole hog. And I was thinking about it earlier. Is there's there was a bunch of CEO got fired in January, and everybody assumed it was because um, because Destiny Two got delayed. But now I'm starting to wonder. I was I'm wondering if that CEO just was resisting Activision, you know, pressuring them to do you know, do pay this. to win gear. Microtransactions. Yeah. And maybe they just said, well, if you're not going to go along with this, you're out. You know, I really See, wonder if that's what happened. See, the thing is, this sucks that they're trying to make more money like this. And I understand why they're doing it, but it still sucks overall. Yeah. And the way you said that, like, it, it's pay to win. Like, now, what if they counter that and it's even worse? What if they, yeah. they separate the people that pay to win? They're, they're only pay to win, like, their matches. The people that actually paid for the guns actually get separated from the community. What do they do that? Like, it'll be fair to everyone else, but then you look at a smaller community because now other people are paying for certain guns and they're competing against the people that already paid for certain guns. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it'll be kind of weird. You know, like, it's, I, it's I don't almost, know. It's almost a situation where you can't win. You can't win. Yeah. You know, it's a yeah. no-win scenario. Um, well, I think there, there is a way to win. Is Bungie needs to come out with these DLCs and they need to be... Big enough that gamers feel like the value is there that they don't mind spending thirty or forty bucks for a DLC. Yeah. You know, if they could do that every th- three to four months, three to five months, you know, gamers are ha- the biggest problem with Destiny is that people want more content for it. So they can they can sell this stuff, but they just need to be able to figure out a way to re- develop it fast enough. See, the thing is, like, I don't know, because like, there's so many things, right? The economy and everything, costs for everything has gone up. Like, the cost of everything has gone up. If you look at video games, they haven't. Like, look how many years now. The, the video game, every single time you got a next-gen console, they always went up about $10. It has not done that. And the reason why they have not done that is that they have to find different ways to try to bring in the money because now games cost even more than it did in the past. So, like, but- now you have more people on a team, even more money involved, and now, like, it's either – they start doing this, and when they don't make money, you lose developers. You lose developers, you lose uh, updates. It's going to be updates that are going to take even longer because it'll be less people, and they're not going to be as good. And that's like the sacrifice you make. It's like, what do you choose? You know, and like, I understand both sides of it because I'm not only a developer, I'm a gamer. You know, like, I, I enjoy games, and I think it sucks. Pay to win is probably the worst thing ever for me. I hate that. But at the same time, like, on the developer side, I understand. And don't forget, the publishers are the ones really pushing the developers, like, yeah. to begin with. They're the ones that care about the money because they invest all that money on those developers. So if they don't well make said. a profit with all those investors, especially Activision, like, you're talking about, they they expect billions of dollars, not 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 millions. You know, millions yeah. isn't enough anymore. It's billions of dollars. So that that's, it's it's rough. Now, the Call of Duty community is going through the same thing right now, is, you know, uh, Treyarch said, no, 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 we're not going to have pay-to-win transactions. We're not going to sell guns in these packages. And they started. You know, they had to. Activision seemingly is pressuring Bungie and Treyarch to do the same thing. And it's like basically the same kind of transaction. You have to pay and hope that you get the stuff you want, you know? And it's yep. it's insidious because it's not like I can just pay for that perfect gun that I want. You know, they're not charging me $5 it's for the gun random. I want. They're they're charging me two dollars for a very no small chance, chance of getting yeah. it. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's insidious. It sucks. Yeah, it's not good for anyone, like except the publisher. Like they are a business; they just need to make money in development. Anything you do does cost money, and it's unfortunate. So, what is the solution? We raise the price of a standard video game to maybe eighty dollars or something. Like I don't know what that solution is, but it's definitely not good as it is. Here, I got a solution for you. Ready? Okay. There should be pay That's to win. Fine. Let people buy those guns. People that don't have the guns, you get double the kill and double the XP every person you kill that has that special gun and you don't. There you go. No, 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 I don't like that. Double XP, double everything. When you kill someone that has the, the wrong that has a gun that they pay for, you don't. The end. You'll just keep getting double the kills and everything else and I'm just gonna dominate. keep deleting it when I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. All right, we I'm got sure some you'll news. keep us posted on that, uh, Briar. I'd like to definitely stay up on that news. I didn't know anything about that, 
And that's a road I did not see Activision and Bungie taking, not yeah. with Destiny. So. Right. They're doing it with yeah. Call of Duty and Destiny right now. It's it's, it's upsetting both. Thing, definitely. Yeah. I haven't played either one in a while, so that was that was very uh, entertaining news. But yeah, we do got some news, guys. So uh, PlayStation PlayStation four four point five will be announced before the release of PlayStation VR, according to new rumors. PS four point five and the existing PS four will share the same software catalog, despite their power differences. Thank God, because the worst thing Sony could have done here is if they made it so certain games on PS4.5, you would not be able to play them on PS4. That is like suicide. The, that would like never the, work. You would cut your consumer base. Like they could the not new 3DS, yeah. Now, uh, this this thing we all know is coming now. Um, we talked about this two weeks ago. Uh, is anybody interested in maybe picking this thing up? Now, from what we understand so far... <laughs> I am. The PS4. Well, damn, raise your hand if you're sure. The PS4.5 will be able to uh, to upscale uh, traditional PS4 games to 4K. Uh, some newer games will be able to run 4K, but it is not guaranteed that all newer games will be able to do it. Existing software will not be uh, changed as far as the frame rate uh, unless a developer of said title goes back in and uh, patches it and makes it better. But I'm different. I'm, I want this thing specifically for the PlayStation VR. Now, of course, when you put on the PlayStation VR headset, the game is going to look the same because the VR headset is actually the resolution you're looking at. But it will have improved frame rate and whatnot. And I want the best experience I can possibly get when you got competitors like the HTC and Oculus Rift and the, the PSVR obviously isn't going to be as powerful. This new PS4.5 or PS4K might make it a little bit better for the traditional gamer. I still yes. call BS. Uh, I still call BS on the 4K upscale because they're saying that, but like, what's the what's the frame rate going to be? I, I I'm I'm just kind of curious how well, they're going to have a device. It's, that it's not, not going to run PCs. native 4K. It's just it's, it's going to run native. native like 1080p you, or 720. It's just going to yeah, upscale, gonna just like upscale. your TV would upscale it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, an upscale. It's a so complete like bullshit feature. <laughs> it's the only thing I care about in this that I know they're going to have. I'm almost guaranteeing, I'm hoping they're going to have 4K Blu-ray player. If they yes, have a 4K Blu-ray player in there. That could and, be big. And Amazon. Yes. And Hulu and Netflix support. 4K that for streaming services. That must too. buy because now you have yeah. everything you need that's you know down the line. That's what I want. Like That's what I need. 4K TV and everything. So get that. That's what I want. You know. That, I think, will sell it alone. That's going to get all the people that had those PS3s just for the Blu-ray players. Now you're going to get them to get the, the PS4s for the Blu-ray player. Like that's, yes. those, that's a whole other bunch of people they didn't grab back yet from the PS3 days. Upscaling so that, the also, games, though, is a non-factor. I think it's a complete bullshit marketing thing. Yeah. Well, there is a big uh, rumor going around that Sony Santa, Monica, Sony Santa Monica is actually working on a God of War 4K. So, Yeah. Well, there's no way. There's no way. Your, like it's not even theoretically reasonably possible. Like it's not. <laughs> like there's no way they can sell a box for 400 bucks that could run a game at 4K native resolution. There's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Even reasonable. My Anyone who understands hardware not. even slightly My knows that's not possible at that price point. Game, the fastest I could get is 31 frames per second. And what and graphic like, card are you running? Weapon. What graphic card are you running? 88 Ti, 980 Ti. Uh huh. And wow. that's that, a that's a five hundred dollar video card, right? Yes. Yeah. And that is not running that in the reasonable frame rates for a right. PC. So I well, highly doubt that it's going to be like for PC. They have to have. I don't know how they'll do it. If they do it, that that'll be the most amazing thing ever. Like, unless they sprinkle pixie dust in that fucking thing. <laughs> it might have pixies there, man. Who knows? My PC can run a Blade and Soul in 4K at 45 uh, frames per second. But is that upscale? Wait, play play what game? Blade and Soul. Blade, but that's not Blade the same Soul? thing as like playing that's the division or something. About, I'm talking about when you try to do like Crisis or something, Crisis 3, when you try to do actual <laughs> game kind of thing, you're not going to run that on no laptop. <laughs> Three <laughs> frames. <laughs> All right. Is at, is at reasonable frames per second. No way. All right, guys, continuing on with the news, PlayStation news. PlayStation VR could one day be available for PC after the hardware is launched, according to Sony. This would be awesome. This would just be a cheaper VR alternative for It sounds PC like, gamers. yeah, they're definitely yeah. going to do that. I actually, I don't remember his exact quote, but I'm paraphrasing. He said that once we get everything situated with the PlayStation 4, we won't have any issue putting this on the PC. So. Shuhei? 
Was it Shu or? No, no, it wasn't Shu. Um, it was another Japanese guy. Let's just call him Foot. Um, you know, that, God. but but he uh, he uh, I'm paraphrasing. He said that after the PS4 is released and this is launched, they're going to try to move forward with uh, putting this on PC. I think that's really awesome. I think it's really smart. Yeah. It would give the Oculus even more competition on the PC. Oh I, yeah, you know, like those problems. Didn't the Oculus help the PlayStation VR? If you remember in the beginning, like they're they're yeah, well they they went there, them. yeah. Yeah, Sony met with them. <laughs> That's kind of messed fun. up, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean they Damn, they've got a com- they got a compelling product there. You know, that VR headset is the lowest on the market by a long shot, lowest price on the market by a long shot. Uh, apparently, it looks great. You know, that's that's it phenomenal. does. I can't wait. I, I, you guys I get pre orders in for Deep down, yes, sir. I, I haven't have... done it. Yet. I haven't done. Oh, it yet. you better. Have you? you better. Have you? Oh, Pre orders. Let are me know. At my game. I, have, I got. I got to do two. I got to do two at the same time. Uh, well, I don't know if they've done it yet, but they are going to release the version. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I have two uh, VR orders. VC, I got to so get the. Cool. I, I got to get the five hundred dollar one and the four hundred dollar one because uh, I've already got move controllers and a PlayStation uh, camera. Yeah. So instead of just doing uh, the five hundred in the beginning, I wanted to wait until both were available. I think they were both made available on the twenty eighth of March. Now I think about it. So I got I got to definitely check it out this week. The, but yeah, I'm the getting cheaper to, one uh, was made available on the twenty eighth. I believe so. Yeah, the twenty eighth. Okay. So if they're both available, I'll go ahead and do them both. But yeah, I'm gonna do both of those and a PS four K. So yeah, moving into a. I want to get a PS four K just because my my PS four that's in my office is already hit, you know on the fritz. The thing ejects oh, wow. discs constantly. It you know it's <laughs> beeping constantly. The thing is, like, it sounds like it's constantly having a heart attack. So I just want I want to toss that thing, and I'll put a 4K. I'll put the 4K one down in the living room. That'll be the perfect excuse to get one of those new OLED 4K screens. Which I, <laughs> that's the excuse. Frankly, I'm just going to need at that point. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, really, like, no you. excuse let not to you. get one at that. <laughs> let, let me ask you guys a question. Okay, so the GPU for the PS4K is twice as powerful as the one that you're using now, yeah. and it's half the size. Do you guys think the PS4K is going to be a slim? It depends if they put that VR breakout box inside. Yeah, I don't know. I bet it will it's, be a little more streamlined. I don't, I don't think they would like do that. A lot slimmer, but I, it could be a little bit. I don't think I just, they're going to do that, though, because some of the people who buy it probably won't get the PSVR. You know, that's I think, gonna be it, I think a, it's going to be bigger because they're going to have two levers on the top. One's going to be a power <laughs> lever. It's going to be like kerchunk. <laughs> Sure. And it's gonna be an eject, <laughs> kerchunk. <laughs> Instead of I guess fucking uh, capacitive buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, cause like I feel like if it's gonna be even more powerful, a, a bigger, like a better GPU, that means it's gonna transmit more heat. So I don't see it being slimmer. I, I think, I mean, I think it's gonna be a little bit slimmer. I just don't see it to be that much slimmer. I just think it's gonna be a different design. But I mean, they always do a different design. They always do a slimmer one, anyway, right? So we'll see how slim it is. But I, I think they better be careful because they better make sure to keep that thing cool. The smaller it yeah. gets, it's gonna sound like my old 360. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> sound like there's a goddamn jet engine in the living room. <laughs> yeah, one, one of my PS3s does that, man. That shit will wake up the whole neighborhood. All Jeez. right, guys. So so continuing on uh, with a company that. Continually lets me down for the most part. Ubisoft has opened a brand new development studio in the Philippines, known as Ubisoft Philippines. The <laughs> studio's so, studio's main, to me. <laughs> the, the studio's main focus will be assisting development on future games alongside other Ubisoft-owned studios. So instead of ten studios on one game, you're going to have eleven. Oh my God, this is amazing, <laughs> Briar. Aren't you excited about this? <laughs> I got yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, you see what I did there? More bots development. <laughs> like I don't. Uh, all right. What What is Ubisoft working on? What's the last game they worked on that you guys were excited about? Assassin's Vision? Creed One. Damn, man! Wow, you really that's want, a long way. You gonna shit on them like that? <laughs> <laughs> no toilet paper. Shit all over them. Damn. <laughs> That's hardcore, brother. Oh, well, uh, well, at least some Philippines, some Filipinos are getting some new jobs. Hopefully, that they're going to yeah. come up with some nice new ideas. Yeah. Call it. Let me see. Call of Duty. Call of Duty 2016 will be set in the very far future, according to new information from uh, Studio Insider Shinobi 602. The Is game it will be, be a Ghost full- too. No, they already said. Let's get to that. You know, 
the game will be a uh, will be <laughs> full on sci fi, uh, featuring space combat and not be a sequel of Call of Duty Ghosts. Here's what I'll say about this. This could either be a very new cool direction for Call of Duty, because this isn't like another near future game. This is like this is hundreds of the years future. future. Yeah. This is space Clear Nimoy in this joint. So this could either be something very cool, very new, very innovative for Call of Duty, which is always welcome, or this could just be them running out of ideas. And I'm not sure which it is, but... The Maybe game is you'll not fly around in a spaceship and you'll be able to switch out your armor and weapons and you'll be able to like double jump or twi- triple jump. Maybe they'll have three different classes that you can play as. Hey. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought, so you I thought they had this game ready. Isn't it called Halo 5? Isn't it called Halo 5? <laughs> <Isn't it's called laughs> <Halo> <laughs> uh, like I, oh. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah. that they made that game already <laughs> in the far future, right? <laughs> well, I can yeah. see it now. Jason X will be... Uh, uh, um, DLC character. <laughs> is this the right move for Call of Duty? <laughs> yes. yeah. I really don't know if it is. If, it, if it's a fun game to play, I'm happy for them, but Call of Duty's kind of lost me at this point. Yeah. They have to, they have to really switch up the formula to get me back. And this is a rumor, too. This has not been confirmed, so until the game is announced, but, I mean, I don't know. They're trying something different. Like, I gotta wait until I see this game. Bottom line. I am excited for it. But let's wait until we see it and it's announced. To be, to be, to be, be honest, uh, I don't ever want to hear myself say this because I, I part of me loves Call of Duty, but I agree with Briar 100% on here. It's like until they do something different enough that it doesn't feel like the same last six games, I'm just not interested. I'm just even playing Black Ops 3 and, and I don't think I'm dissing Black Ops 3. I think it's a great game. It is. Great. Yeah. But it's not it's not enough to keep me. There's so much other shit going yeah, on. The other games cool. have yeah. like moved forward. And, and, you, and your peripheral, it's like all this stuff that's going on. You can't really focus on. I feel like I played it before. Yeah. And that's why I like playing Doom. It feels so different and so fresh. It really is. Wait, if if I was playing Doom right now, if Doom was here right now, and there was like a new Call of Duty, I go straight. Doom is so fucking good. Did you it hear goes, what he said? Do you hear what he said? He said I. I don't ever want to hear myself say this, but I agree with Briar Rabbit. I, that's all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's how damn you said it. Damn, that's you fucking savage, dude. <laughs> yeah, no toilet paper. Shit all over. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how I feel about uh, Call of Duty, man. Hopefully they, they come up with something new. They got to try something new, man. Um, and everybody's a future shooter. And before before we actually went live, I believe Briar was talking about going back in the day. You know, to back in the old days, World War One, World War Two, and maybe uh, separating themselves from the pack because everybody seems to be going forward and trying to come up with more futuristic tech and hypotheticals. Just take it back. There hasn't been a game like that in, in probably, God, 10, 15 years. It's been a while, it feels like. I don't know if it's very, been very that long, long but it's been a while. It does concern me, though, because, you know, the fan base says we want Call of Duty boots on the ground. We want, like, a World yeah. War Two game. And then we're like... And then the rumors say, oh, it's going to be a space call of duty even farther in the future. And then people are, you know, upset about that. And I can understand that. So we'll have to wait and see. But I don't know. Like, I have to see this game first. But it's at least they're going to at least we're going to have an engine that Briar Rabbit can get behind that net code that he loves. Right. That's true. Infinity War. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They don't change it around too much. It might work. I'm going to boot up Call of Duty Ghost again. I'll play. I'll play it with you. All right. I need to play it on. I got it on Xbox One too. I need to play it on. I haven't even I tried it on Black Xbox. Ops Three again though. I love Black Ops Three. I don't play it all the time, but it's a great game. A lot yeah. of white people I know like Black Ox. Um, <laughs> Final did Fantasy. Not say that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I misheard you. Uh, <laughs> what the, yes, uh, you did. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wow. Good <laughs> night, everybody. I'm Is done. this real? <laughs> <laughs> What's in that bottle there? Yeah, right. Is this real life? I think I had too many. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's Final gone. Fantasy. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> and if Robbie's mom is watching that, I'm sorry. <laughs> His mom just unplugged the time. internet. <laughs> <laughs> Plug it back in, Barb. Plug She's like, in. this is over. This is done. <laughs> You're not doing Those fucking Americans are killing your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. good people. Not too sure what they're talking about, but I'm about to disconnect the internet. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, Final Fantasy 15 oh will be released God. September 30th, 2015 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Wait, I, just, I thought, weren't you just talking about Final Fantasy 15? That's what I said, isn't it? Oh, I thought you said 13. Okay. Oh, oh did I? Maybe I don't, know, your drink I don't even know. 
<laughs> let me let me just do it again. Final Fantasy 15 will be released September 30th, 2015 for PS4, PC, and Xbox One. And I will have it that day because the demo is it's captivated my heart. <sighs> Continuing on, Phil Spencer says Halo 5 coming to PC is not very likely, but future entries in the series could come to PC alongside the Xbox One. What do you guys think about that? Is that kind of disheartening for the Xbox community? I think you guys are a bunch of dicks. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think I think it's good, but it also kind of sucks. I, I was kind of hoping for Gears to come. So if Halo is not going to come, I think they might hold back something like Gears yeah. and Halo from going to PC. So that's the thing. Like that's what yeah, sucks about this news. Like I want Gears just, to go to PC. I it's will really love to hard to read like. though. It's like really hard to to really figure out what they're doing because a game like Quantum Break you wouldn't expect one of their pivotal, you know, exclusives to be released day and date on PC with the Xbox One. So, I mean, that's one of their games that's been touted for the last two or three years as being just this unbelievable Xbox One experience, and they're putting it on, you know, PC the same day it comes to the Xbox One. So, there's really no way to tell. They're flipping fucking coins in those offices, you know? Yeah. Huh, that's not going to PC. That one is, <laughs> you know? So Maybe, it's the developers? Time, okay? Maybe the developers are making these decisions. You think so? I don't know. Well, I, I, mean, <laughs> I, don't know I would say yeah, but like those there, are <laughs> they're completely controlled by Microsoft. Those developers, so I'm like, I don't think it's them because like they're controlled. I mean, they would love to sell more games, but like they they have no control over. It. I don't think it's all Microsoft and Microsoft investors. I don't see them if they see that it's not doing great sales. They're gonna open up the line and say, bring it to PC just to mm-hmm. try to get maximize as much as you can. Get in for that sales. Windows. Get in that Windows store. Yeah. yeah. So oh, always about the fucking dollars. That's what uh, Joe Pesci says. All right. An unannounced Bioshock collection for PS4, Xbox One, and PC has resurfaced once again. This time it has been rated by the ESRB. Now, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I love Bioshock. It's one of those first-person shooters that kind of pulls you into the world, makes you forget about real life, and then all of a sudden your boss is calling you, your, you know, your baby's mom is throwing a shoe at your head type of situation. Because you're so damn into the game, I'm I'm kind of excited about this. You guys like Bioshock? Yeah, love yeah. Bioshock. I'm yeah. tired of collections. They, there's like a collection every week, though. There's like a collection, like I literally a Steam. There's always a collection. I'm like, I've never seen a game that had so many collections. I think like Bioshock <laughs> has so many packs. Oh, you can get Bioshock One, Two, Infinite. Oh, you can get all three. Like it's like, yeah. and it just it kind of. I mean, it's cool for people that haven't played yet, but I think by now a lot of people have played it. So I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I, if they be, remastered Bioshock yeah. One, I'd go back to. It. I'd check it out again. It's been a Bioshock long Bioshock One. Bioshock it's One. Sorry. Though. If they remastered Bioshock One, it's been long enough for me that I would go back and check it out again. Yeah. That's one of those it's games a, that, when I was done remastered. with it, I was like, man, I'm never gonna get to experience that for the first time again. <laughs> you know, like that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm more excited for One than Infinite too. Um, and that's one of those games is so old now to to see that remastered on PS4 would be a real treat, man. Especially for younger people. My kids, they never played Bioshock, so oh, to have yeah. that on PS4, it'd probably just blow their brains on the tops. Yeah. I'm excited for it. You guys going, I mean, well, what do you think, Robbie? You you big into the Bioshock? Or do you like collections? Oh, no, I love Bioshock. Like, 1, 2, Infinite, they're all very fantastic games. And I'm mostly excited for this just because the fact that when these collections happen, it usually means they're going to make a new game announcement, which Bioshock 3 could definitely happen. And uh, even... Take two said it's a permanent franchise, so maybe this year it's possible. Well, okay, well, I guess time will tell. Now, this next bit of news is exclusively for Robbie because Robbie gets our news together and sometimes he puts in sometimes he puts bullshit in just to feed his own ego. But Guitar Hero Live developer Freestyle Games has experienced a round of layoffs. Roughly fifty people have been let go of the studio, which is around half of the entire the entire development team. Well, just, under... I'm done with this. You know what? Screw you guys. I'm done. <laughs> like, who, who was surprised about this? <laughs> <laughs> Robbie is surprised. He plays that fucking game every day. What are you talking about? But, uh, I don't I know. Don't I, think, play it every day. I, I think the game, <laughs> like, the whole thing with the game, though, Robbie, it's like, it's not shocking because I don't know if you guys heard, like, you know, they, they did decently. Like, they sold a good amount. You know, I mean, they just, the problem is that. The, these games over here, they just release people because they had a higher goal and they thought that everyone's going to go crazy like they did in the past, which they didn't. It's not the same. You know, it, it was a it was a fad and it, it, it went out and that was it. You know, some people did buy it. Some people did enjoy it. But, I mean, it just wasn't enough. And they set their, 
you know, their goals like too high and they, they just didn't reach them. And that's why, unfortunately, developers are suffering and they, they have no jobs. So, yeah, I mean, Guitar Hero Live is a great game. Like I've said, yeah. I really enjoy it. I played like at least 50 hours of it. I put a lot of time into it and it sucks. Like they, this is half the studio they laid off, which is a real shitty situation. So wow. wishing the best for all those people because that's not fun to lose your job ever. Not no. good. No, it's not. It happens no. all the time if you're in the urban communities. All right, so according to Square Enix, Final Fantasy 15 will need to sell around 10 million units for the game to turn a profit. The That's only a game, lot. the only game in the Final Fantasy series to ever reach that goal was Final Fantasy 7, which sold 11 million units worldwide. Do you guys what think that Final Fantasy 15 could do that? Holy fuck! <laughs> What are they thinking? I don't know, man. I mean, there's a lot of Final Fantasy fans. There's a ton of people clamoring to get their hands on anything Square, Square in Final Fantasy. You know, I mean, yeah, but I they know haven't I'm, sold. They haven't sold that many since Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Seven, Seven, which was by far the most gonna, popular Final wow. Fantasy they've ever had. Yeah, but it's just Final Fantasy, though. You know, since Seven, there hasn't really been one on that caliber as far as fan Eight, reception. Nine, those were pretty good nope. ones. Nope. The, the next one would probably be ten. Ten was probably the 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 next best selling one. Yeah, after after seven. I don't know. This eight is was, this is dumb. If you are if you are if you're setting your sales expectations on your all time high, you're fucking it up. I tell you how they do it. Ready? I love it, Briar. <laughs> I tell you how they're gonna do it. They're gonna have Kingdom Hearts three demo inside of it, and that's Bam, how they're gonna boom. sell it. I get <laughs> if they if they have that in there, it's probably gonna be sold. Game like I, I would think they'll reach that. If Zone they of the it. Enders says hello. <laughs> 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 what if they included like like a thirty minute demo or an hour demo of Kingdom Hearts uh, three? That would help Ooh, the every, sales. <laughs> every, they would, they would, they would reach it. They would definitely. I think they would reach it because like there's a lot of people with Kingdom Hearts that would definitely buy that. So, so uh, I, any representative at Square watching the Beastly Thoughts podcast, please send the check care of Beastly right. Thoughts to. Just contact us in the comment section yeah. below. <laughs> isn't this uh All right. isn't this also PS3? And is it or is it no, just next gen? No, just no, 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 no. No, it's is PS4, it? Xbox One. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was like, trying to remember if this was one of the ones that was also last gen too. Originally it was, but now it's current gen. Okay, okay. They did, okay, I just want they to make did sure the, they they did the definitely... dying light. They did the dying light on that ass. They took it away from the PS3 and the Xbox 360. <laughs> Y'all don't said, get none. No. <laughs> you get none of this. <laughs> mm-hmm. What else we got? Uh, there's one news we yeah. missed, which is right the Shadows of Mordor. Yep. Two. Cool. Uh, yeah, that that sounds like that that right there sounds like a good game. I I think because the first one went under the radar for a lot of people. A lot of people may have missed it, but it, I like to see games like that that may have went out like under the radar and then like when people finally heard of it, they saw how good it was. So I kind of like to see what they can do with it the second time around. Hold, now that people hold, know hold what on, to not expect. too nerdy. For yes, the people sir. who can't see our notes, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor 2 is in development and may be revealed sometime soon, according to a posting from a stunt act, a stunt actress's online profile. That's like a really rare place to find this kind of information. I was <laughs> yeah. doing a cartwheel, and then, <laughs> then I found out about Shadows of Mordor 2. Holy shit. I mean, so the game is in development, according to a stunt actress. How many stunt actresses do you know, and are they trustworthy? Well, she was probably doing motion capture lie. for the game. Yeah, oh, that's okay. what it was. Yeah, it was motion capture. <laughs> it was an Are stunt so actresses lying? Hit, hit she just started seeing Michelle's motor too. <laughs> she had a vision. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> just some random chick is like, oh yeah, this game is happening. She's not a stunt yeah. actress. She's a medium. She can see yeah. shit. <laughs> Uh, I really liked Shadows of Mordor. I thought that Nemesis system should be brought into like every game. It doesn't have to oh, be like front and center like it was in that game, but I thought that was like a really cool idea, and I'd love to see it come to more games. And I'm glad that it, they're capitalizing on the success of that first one. Yeah, that was a sleeper hit in 2014, wasn't it? Was it was huge sleeper hit. Like that was a yeah. really good game. And that I game, Dying Light, all those games just room really for improvement too in that game. If you saw that first game, like it was really good, but there's also room for improvement. So I'm hoping that they they hit those spots to improve it, and I, I think it will be a really really great game if it comes out. So oh yeah, they want they want to sell 11 million copies of it. If they don't, then fuck it, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Shut up the whole studio. That and that's the news for this week's Beastly Thought Show, guys. Some good really, news. I'm really looking forward to this 4.5K PlayStation, man. 
Like this is kind of got me hyped. I wonder if Xbox is going to have like what's E3 going to look like this year? They, they it's going to be insane. Can you imagine they, with NX, PS4.5, and possibly an Xbox One upgrade? Uh, sorry, like, wow. wait. That yeah. was just sent today. Uh, Spencer said no to 1.5. He said that earlier no, today. No, it's not happening. Trend, he's trending on uh, Facebook everywhere. Facebook, it says that different uh, posts. He said that they're not going to do 1.5. That if anything, they'll focus on a new one in the future, but they're not going to do a 1.5. Oh, God. Okay. They're going to really, oh, man. It's going to be rough for them this year then. They can't catch up. Microsoft well, they can do well a half a cycle doing. like they did with the original Xbox. They could just yeah. abandon the Xbox One and say, let's move forward with the Xbox Two. Or they probably wouldn't but, go with that branding, frankly. <laughs> but I hope not Xbox. Uh, you know, I they mean, could just move but, forward with the next Xbox. It probably wouldn't be a bad companies, idea. Companies you know? who do that, you kind of look at what's happened. Like, you know, look at Sega. The look Sega at Xbox Saturn. 360, though. I mean, they, they shortened the Xbox One life cycle and came out the gate with a winner. Here's the thing, though. You know, be crazy Good if point. Microsoft does this, right? They jump into a new console. Like, do you realize that we might have for the first time in a while a console like from that starts at a different starting point? All three of them. So, like, you have the NX, and then like then the Xbox might do their own thing, and then after that, PlayStation if they do PlayStation Five. So, like, all of them will be separate. So, like, then what does the community do? You know what? What, what happens is one of them is the lead platform. And everything else is a port, and it's gonna be they're gonna be shitty ports because they're gonna yeah. have to, you know, they're either the they're not gonna take gonna advantage of the newer different. hardware, or they're gonna be crappy on the really old hardware. That would be for Nintendo, man. I think Nintendo. What would if be, Nintendo comes out the winner? Yeah, I know. I just, know what they're bringing out I yet. just can't see it, man. It's so hard. I love Nintendo. I know it sounds like I I, I don't, but Nintendo has kind of let me down so much, you know. Yeah. I mean, I love Smash Brothers. I love Bayonetta 2. Some of the other Wii U games are great. I just, when I look, it's sitting right there. I just don't fuck with it anymore. I only watch YouTube on that fucking thing. And YouTube still Mario sucks Maker is on. pretty damn good, though. Yeah. Like, oh, really? I might try that. See, I don't think I've turned on my Wii U <laughs> since Mario Kart 8 came out. That was almost two years ago. That tells you right there. You just switch out of nowhere. Oh, really? I'm going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. I, I don't know. Either way, E3 is going to be... So we're not going to get anything out of the Xbox then, but PlayStation 4.5K, seeing what the capabilities of that system are, are they going to have you know, upgraded, up versions of games for the 4.5K? I doubt it, but if they do, that'd be compelling. Um, only just getting, if, only just getting the Netflix and the Blu-ray, high-def Blu-ray okay? support, though, would yeah. be fantastic. And then seeing what Nintendo's coming out with, man. Fans are ravenous to see what that's going to be. Nintendo, I swear, I feel like this. You know how in Destiny, when you get a blue or a purple Ingram, you get a legendary Ingram. Mm-hmm. And you go to turn it in, and you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. But, 90, but 90% of the time, it's shit. Yeah. Oh. That's how I fucking feel about Nintendo. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. but you know what that means? There's still a 10% chance they might be golden. (laughs) It could be good. It could be good. We might get an exotic out of Nintendo. (laughs) If we do, I'll be happy as shit. But oh man. If we got an exotic out of Nintendo, that would be unbelievable. Uh, Nintendo, all they need is a controller and third party support. Now that third party support is a big thing. But if they get those two things, they already have their own games that already will sell. They need. Other people games like to sell on their their console, and they that's all they need. So they could jump right back in. So. They could system. They could the never they get can. third parties without. They absolutely could get third parties. See, Not here's the thing. He said no. What we're forgetting system. what what made Nintendo survive this whole generation was the 3DS. So they they, you know, this generation they survived because of 3DS. So the next generation they have room to like to learn from their mistakes if they choose to. So who knows? We'll see well, what happens. Another good thing is Nintendo does have public opinion. Everybody kind of bitched and moaned about that leaked NX fake controller, and everybody was really upset with it. Hopefully of course, they're we know watching that. Was... that. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Nintendo did patent they patent the controller that looked just like that, and so they saw that everybody was like, "Oh my god, I don't ever want to fucking play this. I don't want to touch this thing." So hopefully, they they give people a more traditional controller instead of some shit. You got to sit this on your kneecap, put this up your ass, and all of a sudden you're playing. 
You know, I just want to regular game. Game. See what it does. <laughs> I I think think it straight, man. Man. When, when have you ever seen that final design look exactly like the pattern design? Never. <laughs> That's why it, it was someone actually like, I'm like, that does not look like it does look pretty good, but that's, n- I can't be real. And then finally the guy showed a video of how he made it with a 3d printer, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> which is pretty cool though, but it was pretty cool. Ninja Wave in the uh, comments has announced new Legend of Zelda for day one on NX. That'll be a show killer. Absolutely. That would be huge for them. They absolutely are doing that. Now Mario too. They need, they need, they yeah. need a real they 3D come out the Mario, strong. not one of these The rumor is they're going to have a Pokemon Launch game for Mario. it, like right out the gates. Pokemon, yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. huge. That's the rumor. I, I, they better I, I not put all those though. games at the same time and not have games for months after that, so they better space them out just a little bit. But yeah. I think if they have a game on par with the release of Mario 64, a nice Pokemon game, a from the ground up, not rehash or re- reimagine Metroid game, bring, bring some Kid Icarus. You know, to the to the NX, a nice Donkey Kong. Yeah, Metroid is likely because I mean, Retro's been working on something since uh, Tropical Freeze came out. They've definitely got something. You know what they need? They need a third party exclusive right out the gate. Bayonetta three, Destiny two. There you go, oh, Destiny can you two. Imagine? Holy oh for the my NX. god! <laughs> <laughs> Holy for shit! The NX. Be what are you gonna do, Ryer? What are you I'm going to do? the NX. <laughs> I think everyone is. Briar's getting an NX either I'm way. I'm getting a Nintendo okay. the fuck up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you, what do you do? You see Briar Rabbit is live stream just like Luigi. Like the f- <laughs> <laughs> What's up, my guardians? Woo-hoo! Time to get down on some fucking destiny. <laughs> All right. I think that calls a cast, right? I think we got everything we need <laughs> God. Oh man! Thanks everybody for watching, man. We had a real good fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Beastly, what are you up to this week? Uh, well, I want to take my wife to get her kidney stones removed tomorrow, and then after that, I want to probably uh, play some Doom, some more Doom beta until Doom's the beta. Nice. I will be on there. Let's do it. Date night. Yeah. Date night. Yeah. Date night. Date night. Date night. <laughs> and Robbie doesn't even have kidney huh. stones. You'd be frankly trading up. I told you he likes Black Hawks. What? Hold on. Black what? What? I'm so confused. I'm going to stick with Beasley. <laughs> Not too dirty. What are you up to this week? I am going to uh, put a lot, up a lot of different videos on the retro channel, as well as uh, I'm going to show some gameplay of all the bad choices for uh, Walking Dead, Michonne's uh, story. Say this. So uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm going to play a little bit more Paragon. So I have that. I actually have footage. I just been editing. I'm trying to get like a lot better, better at editing, make it look a lot clearer and stuff like that. So uh, once I do that, I'll, I'll definitely post some some video of that and stuff like that. But and, and um, you I said had your what's your, that? Uh, your pickups video will be up. You said later on today or tomorrow. Well, I have one pickups video as we speak right now that I did. It's from the flea market. So that's not like the big games, but I did find like a couple uh, NES games. So definitely check that out. But I do have the Epic game. I'll, I'll release that on uh, Thursday night. So oh, that yeah. would be the, that'll be the one, the, the game changer right there. That, that's one that it's very rare to find. But I'm actually shocked I found it, and it's worth a lot of money, too. You guys, go down to the, to the description. Link's in the description. Go to Not Too Nerdy Entertainment's channel. And, and look out for that shit. This guy, buy, I mean, he gets some really, really unique pickups. And I, I, I try to collect lots of shit. You know, I buy all the consoles and all the little extra knickknacks and doodads. And sometimes, somehow, this guy fucking outdoes me. Well, He'll anyway, just go across the street. We, we got to talk, man. I got a lot of doubles and extra stuff, man. I was going to sell them, but they have your name written on them. Just let you know. Have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> no, you've been talking mad shit about playing Street Fighter Five, and you guys have been talking shit about me. I don't know if you like yeah, right? me anymore, love. Damn it, bro! <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> don't worry, Robbie. Right we love you too, Robbie. We you love sure? you too. You've been shit talking me pretty hard. I don't know if I'm loved anymore. Oh, <laughs> Robbie. Oh, well, Robbie, it's your turn. What? What do you? You know we, we love, love you, Robbie. Robbie. <laughs> I feel like I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robbie, what are you up to this week? Well, definitely tonight, because I think, man, I think today's the last day for the Doom beta. I'm definitely getting into it's, that. I think it's over on the 5th, Robbie. Is it the 5th? Yeah. 
Okay, maybe a couple more days. That's awesome. Uh, definitely playing the shit out of the Doom beta and probably uh, crying the rest of the week while I wait for Dark Souls 3 since people have been playing it for weeks with the imported content. Yeah, that's messed up, man. I, I wish we that. could have I'm talked so about that last about week. That. that was kind of the big news last week. The game looks hot, though. It was controversial because, like, they were basically doing it for press so, like, Twitch streamers can stream it early and stuff like that. Like, it's to get... It's marketing. It's frustrating. It looks good, though. I'm I'm definitely picking that up day one. Well, wow, I got, maybe I, no, maybe no, a couple weeks after day one. There's like three huge releases that day. I, I didn't know that you really got into games like that, Briar. Uh, Bloodborne. Bloodborne hooked me. We all played Bloodborne. Everyone you know, played Bloodborne. Bloodborne is a shit. And I bought the DLC for Bloodborne, but I don't, don't know how to fucking activate it. I thought you could just start the game and just go to the new <laughs> DLC. You got to go someplace, pick up a chalice, and do all this shit. I have no clue. You guys let me know in the comments. How my wife and I can get the damn DLC to work. It's called Google, Google Search. I'd rather <laughs> talk to you guys. So let me know below. All Speak right. to Google. Uh, right. I'll be uh, playing Destiny, obviously. I'll be covering the PvP and Sandbox reveal that's coming up on Wednesday. I'm sure I'll be Sounds talking up. about that quite a bit. Um, I'm actually going to be on the Say No to Rage podcast tomorrow night. So that should be a lot of fun with uh, Lano Got a Gun. Um, I think that's What's about that? it. What's that? What's the podcast? Say No to Rage podcast? Yeah, what's it about? Uh, Destiny, mainly. I thought it was about <laughs> Rage. I should have guessed. Weird. I thought it was like, I thought it was like a self-help podcast oh, where people God. would get Unlucky pissed off or something. in the comment section. Search Black Cox 3 and you will find out how to activate it. Kappa. <laughs> 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 no. All right, guys. Not. Thank you to everybody for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great one. See you, everybody. One.